just tough seeing Cleveland, dude. <laughs> Guest host CJ Gunn. The request lines are now open. Man, <laughs> right I tell old. you, I went to e- ITV to purposely say that one day, and this is just a good example that dreams can come true eventually. <laughs> um, yeah, I am here today uh, filling in for uh, your regular host, Nick Wolf, who has the day off as host. Uh, I thought it would be a good chance to give Nick a break and maybe bring him in as a guest. Right, exactly, because uh, I promote all your awful bands, so uh, it's about time for you have to, to listen to me pander to all of you on why you should come down on a Friday and spend your time with me, for no good reason. But, that, uh, well, that's, that's a good point, because there is a good reason. With the economy now, you're kind of providing things to people that can't afford big events. Oh, we definitely are. We are like Obama. We are providing a new path for America. Um, yeah, no, we try to do free show, like... I feel it's better to let people in for free and work some sort of deal out with the door. Um, by the way, I'm Nick Wolf, in case you don't uh, recognize my voice here every week here. But um, I feel it's better just to do that. Let people in there. Let them start drinking. I feel you have a better show usually. And it's like no one wants to pay, pay for admission unless it's like, you know, a, a Live Nation show or something like that. So just give the people what they want and let them drink and well, have that, fun. That brings me to a good point because you hear a lot of people nowadays saying it's very costly to go to 
a ball game with your friends with hot dogs, parking, beer, or the movies, or whatever the case may be. And I think what you're doing here is you're providing an opportunity for families to come on out. Well, and that's free parking, free show. I right. mean, I mean what we're else the could... rock and roll city, and people are you know it's, it's supposed to be into it. And the one way you got to do that, if people will come out to music, they do. There's not a whole lot to do unless you want to spend all your money. The problem is, is I think a lot of venues and bands take that option away by like, oh, no, it's $20 and we're playing with five bands and stuff like that. You know, and it makes people almost like cringe and makes it a problem. It does. This is something that clubs should be packed every week because we are providing, in most cases, if we did our jobs right and the bands were good, we are providing very cheap almost free entertainment at points. It's just, the problem is, is you get the red bad reputation of, you know... Being cheap. Right, exactly. <laughs> Speaking of cheap, let's talk about what's going on, uh, you know, in the local scene before we get to the big news, the reuniting of the Nick Wolf. I have Wolf to do thing. that again? I just want to talk about myself. I do that every week. Well, week. since I we don't... it. question for you, CJ. Yes. How was the taco bar? I, cause, you know, I missed your birthday. I can only smell it. What, was I, it... Was I, it awesome? You know, I never played in such a hot room that smelled like one endless fart. <laughs> well, I was there. Your uh, yeah, your show that uh, Tim Spock, former uh, guest on the show, uh, booked, and I, I did try some of the tacos, and I was sick for three days. Oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. I was sticking my hand in like I, the taco bar ended as soon as I got there because I just stick my hand and grab a glob of meat and throw it <laughs> on a shell. I like sit there eating crumbs or falling back in the like dishes. When, <laughs> so when I, I saw Steve there. Callahan eating from it, I knew it was wrong. That's right. He doesn't wash his hands, so. All right, let's talk about some shows going on at the uh, Beachland Tavern on uh, Thursday, June 21st. We got my friend Bill Mike's band. Now, I've tried to say this name right, and I've been rehearsing this, and I just don't know what this word is, but we're going to give it a try. His band is called Forgotten Souls of An- Antiquity. Thank you, Nick. See, that's what the, the radio, the education, yes. uh, the broadcasting school, I am able to pronounce words like that. But versus the education I had from Parma's ITV. Right. You can't compare the two. <laughs> Anyway, they're going to be at the Beachland Ballroom along with Dan Sartini or Dan Sart. You know, I don't know. They're Sartini? Gonna, yeah. I'm either. just going to blindly pronounce it for yeah. you. I'm going to make up better. the na- make up the names as I go. Uh, anyways, they're going to be at the Beachland Ballroom June 21st. Uh, Ten Bones at nine o'clock. I, I don't know what Ten Bones means. I mean, that's what he. Is that the hipness for yeah. like? Yeah. If I if I don't say money, and people are like that's funny. I'm oh, it means money, it. money. Oh, bones like oh. yeah, or like clams. So. If you want to be the Flintstones, it, it dissolves some unborn babies. And yeah. Bring in the uh, remains. So people aren't walking around with like bones on them. Well, yeah, maybe it's like a Mayan yeah. thing. It could oh. be like you know, a blood zombie. sacrifice. Yeah. yeah. I might have to check that out. <laughs> right. Um. Okay. Another thing going on. Not necessarily a, a punk show, but something cool that's kind of um been going on lately is in the art world to do with the punk bands and the skating is breakneck gallery and uh that's over there in uh lakewood on madison avenue at 17020 madison avenue lakewood ohio they got something going on called what do they call this here art deco show did def jeff help you research all this no i uh, <laughs> clearly did this on my own um that's our friend sean burns and eric Cla- kaplan and jeff Hulligan and many more will be transplanting their work from canvas to uh, skate deck. Oh, so it sounds like they're going to be painting on their skateboards. All right. Uh, it's a cool place. When you go there, vinyl records with painting on it really? and stuff like the Monsters and Frankenstein and all these things, it's it's a pretty cool place. And CJ's researching things that people will actually care about. So. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not used to <laughs> This uh, transcript is, tr- is available if you <laughs> if I just don't get the facts right. you can. <laughs> right. I'll have this posted on my Facebook page later to clarify it all. Uh, another guy in town I'm friends with, his name is Adam Rich, and he runs Love Muffin Records. I can't help but think that's like the worst name ever. Yeah, what? Then again, I don't run a record company. But he does a lot of good work, and I like him, and he's a hardworking guy, and the scene needs more people like him. How many records does he sell? Uh, well, Aaron, that's a good question, because in 2012, not a lot of people sell records. <laughs> how, do a, a, how, do a, Schnauzer. how do you have a record label that doesn't sell records? <laughs> Well, maybe I think that would be called a MySpace page record. <laughs> or label. maybe it's an, an MP3 yeah. label. Right. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Well, anyways, he's got two shows coming up that he's promoting. Uh, June 29th at the Maple Grove, he has the Chromes. What kind of name is the Chromes? Sounds like 80s rockers. It was like punk. Cheetah Chromes children. Oh, I bet you. Maybe some of the playing. Chrome kickers would change their name. Oh, you think, right. oh they're trying I to fool right. us. Yeah. I should have looked that up, too. I could uh, be totally wrong. The Low Lies and Sky Chief will be at uh, the Maple Grove June 29th. I like Sky Chief. We've done some shows with them before. The Exceptions has. 
Then on July 14th, uh, Love Muffin Records presents at the Spitfire, Sky Chief again. How are we get on, uh, Dave, uh, can, <laughs> how are we get on Love Muffin Records? I think that everything we do from now on, we got to talk to them, Dave. Can you do a sublet uh, Poonjive stuff for uh, Love Muffin? We need a demo. There's a lot of legalities. We need a good demo. Maybe we've got an audition. Where, See, where could they send that demo, Dave? Uh, care of Poonjive, P.O. Box 647. <laughs> Not Muzzle Cox's home address. No, Anywho, please don't disclose. July fourteenth at the Spitfire Sky Chief Blue Squad Squared, whatever they're called, in Bluto's Revenge. Then from Kent, Urban Pirates will be playing at uh, the Europe Gyro on Saturday, June sixteenth. That's a free show. Avoid the pizza at all costs. If Unless you want you're... to have a good day the next day. And then uh, rumor has it on the grapevine that on July 28th, the Urban Pirates could possibly be playing with uh, the Dead Enders at uh, Trophies and Checkers See, there in Kent. So this is the three band mentions from CJ already, and um, not one question about us yet. <laughs> this is well, exactly how I knew this was going to be. I'm clearly getting paid by these people. Right, it's Plugola is going on here. You are taking my show, and you are bending it to your own ill devices, sir. Well, we got to cover all areas. <laughs> And Good like, thing, we don't have a you know a practice of integrity yet, so no. you're not ruining anything. We didn't go over this for the last few days, right? Okay. <laughs> and last but not least, the Lakewood Horror Society, which is not a band, but they do something that's kind of cool, and they put on horror movies at a place called Jammy Buggers. They will be doing June 23rd. They'll be showing <laughs> the Evil Dead. Horror uh, movies? Oh, the Evil Dead. Horror. horror. Jam Buggers? Yeah, Jammy Buggers. <laughs> they don't work with Steve Eggs. That sounds scary. Like is that Evil school. Dead the musical? Or? I don't know. Evil Dead, maybe. Or just a movie showing. Or maybe. The, Evil Dead. Yeah. Evil, Evil Dead, Dead, the Zeke song. All right, this is Tough Scene Cleveland, and we'll be right back with your favorite band in mind, the Nick Wolf Band. <laughs> Which I have none It's self-sedation so much fun I left my liver lying on the floor I check my dignity at the front door So what do you do when you're on your last street? Pass out sideways over the bathroom sink You're crying in your puke for all the money you spent Your girlfriend threw you out cause you were short on the road Tough Scene Cleveland, welcome back. Uh, good afternoon, or if you're just waking up, good morning. This this makes a good morning show. If you wake up, you can put it on any time of the day. Right, it's accessible any time of the day. It's reversible morning, day, night, four in the morning when you're like liking inappropriate Facebook pictures and doing bad things to them. Or on your drive home. Right, you yeah. gotta switch to us. Very yeah, because we're on mobile devices through via YouTube. People are on the go today. They like a radio show they can take with them. Right, personal. Um, 
First off, I want to say congratulations for reuniting. This was yeah. something the public has been holding their this breath like for ever. Like congratulations after getting raped in the ass. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's like congratulations for starting AIDS. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Which some of you might not have started, but have helped spread. Right. <laughs> along. You know, so especially that, in Cleveland. <laughs> um, there's half the Asian population's dead just because of muscle cock. <laughs> Uh, with a band with your magnitude, Asian the th- population, there should be a rap group. <laughs> I think that's Dave's uh, uh, in-laws. <laughs> Anywho, but with a band with your magnitude, if we can be serious for a moment, a lot of questions. Okay. <laughs> First off, the impact you guys have had as a band has been insane. The things you guys have done, um, the things you've just influenced, you know, is just beyond belief. Let's. I agree in every every possible way. Um, no, go on. Well, first thing I want to bring up is there's a local uh, radio DJ sidekick in town who seems to be making quite a coin off of your shtick. I have, um, listen, I had a lot of thoughts on this. He liked one of my posts the other day, so I'm going to totally take back everything um, I was saying. Um, but um, I no, think it's too far gone to let right. Chad Zumach <laughs> off the hook. When you have such a coincidence, for the listeners that don't know what we're talking about, allow me to explain. One of your early, uh, um, what would you call it, preachings? Right. Uh, Acts, bits. <laughs> right, one of our bits, one of the things, yeah. That you were going to, if elected, boys. mayor of Parma, uh, change some things, um, such as bringing the demon drop to Parma right. Town Mall. Right, important things that would turn the city around. Which, lo and behold, went on sale at I know. Cedar Point. Which it makes you happen. wonder. Exactly. See, well, then that's so the whole thing, and CJ, platform. not to jump in, jump in too much here, but, like, really... I try to be humble as the host of Tufts and Cleveland, but since I am the guest here today, I would like to say that you are right in every way. I am an innovator. I'm like Tony Stark from the Avengers. I see waves before they even happen. And I knew the plan to bring Parma back, to get us away from the corruption, for people that send back medium-rare burgers, even though they're clearly cooked medium. I will not put up with any of that crap, and Dean DePiro was my first enemy and I, I really wanted to do something drastic i wanted to turn ridge road into a canal system and just transport by boat you know these were great things that you brought to the right. attention of thousands of people do you feel that maybe chad zumach was one of these people who asked to have his burger recooked <laughs> he, he was he was he was in the parma tavern bathroom with the, the, the yeah. piero doing blow but um with the old Zumach thing, <laughs> I kind of crossing the ground between the, how i really feel and my bullshit um well, it was just, you know, I really liked that show a lot, and I thought he was really funny. And, you know, I still do, but um, it really kind of bothered me when I was like, I don't know that he ripped me off, per se. I, it, it, and for me to say anyone ripped me off, to be honest, is completely ridiculous. Cause well, let's, it, let's explain to the listeners, in case they don't know, Chad Zumach came to the scene preaching that he now was going to be the mayor of Parma and gave quite a... Quite a stir. Right. But you? he's a sellout because the year he decided to do it, there actually was an election. I didn't even wait to even know when the election was to run for it. That's how into it I was. That's how much I cared. I didn't even care about the, you know, the paperwork. Um, Is it, it too late to be mayor of Parma, Nick? I, I, listen, I'm the people's man. I am the king of Parma. I don't want to be mayor anymore. I want Parma to be subservient, to kneel before me with all of their glory and power and understand that I can- <clears throat> And the only cool thing about their city, and they should embrace that. Sound like Zod. <laughs> Aaron. Exactly. Well, I am going for a general Zod. A lot of people say there's Sung Tzu. Uh, you should read Sung Tzu to know about warfare. To get ready for my reclaiming of uh, Parma in the Cleveland area, I've been reading uh, Kryptonian uh, journals, uh, General Zod. Interesting. Yeah. Now, Aaron is... And I'm good as long as there's not a phantom zone, for real. As Aaron's a longtime resident of Parma, would you vote for Nick? No. <laughs> So what does that tell you? All um, right. Nick will probably die masturbating like Michael Hutchins, so there's no way that, that could be. Yeah, but what, it, what if that was in City Hall? Tell me that wouldn't be awesome. Well, what if someday you and Zumat run against each other? Then I will run on a platform that I promise I will audio, uh, auto-asphyxiate myself while masturbating in an office. You bring up a good point. Uh, the next point I want to bring up, a platform. You did something new, and you brought something different to this scene, which was you sang from behind a platform. Your earliest shows, your very first shows, we all saw you, you <laughs> preach your mayoral ideas behind a platform. Then years later, after Chad Zumach has kind of done his thing, a band called Davy Porter and the New Republicans come out. And, and those sure are the new enough, Bohemians. Sure enough, their front man was doing his deal from behind a podium. Is that a coincidence, too? Well, uh... <laughs> 
No, because first of all, he's not even the front man. And I don't even know who Davey Porter is. I don't know if it's someone in the band. I don't know if Elise sometimes go by goes by Davey Porter. But um, no, in all seriousness, though, I, I stole like... When I, when I first came on, I kind of made fun of them. I heard, but I sent an email. You're like, how dare you guys? I use the podium and stuff. I took many years cultivating my act from Uncle Scratch and Tony Erba and everybody else that I've ripped off because if, you got to have influences uh, when it comes down to it. For some reason, I, I guess they're tiny a little bit influenced by me in some way. I don't know if that's for sure, but they seem to really kind of like, like be cool to me. So I guess, you know, hey, that's you know, like in all seriousness, I think that's... Uh, it's cool and it's flattery, but yes, uh, I think people honesty. wish their own ideas. I Listen, I distill the best from all the people I see to create the unique superstar that stands in front of you right now. Well, I don't you're need to sitting. rip that off. I make no money. Don't rip me off. I'm the worst person to rip off. What are you going to well, get? Let me bring something to a point here. When uh, Aaron and I had gone to Ken to play with our band and we saw that... Uh, there had been a podium un- unloaded for the show that night. Well, we knew you weren't and playing. They both sent me texts right away. And uh, <laughs> the first thing that came to mind is we were at the wrong place, possibly a restaurant that was taking reservations. Right. It just, you know, it, it kind of confused us. But no, um, there was really a band doing it, and it really just kind of stuck with me. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, Marilyn Manson did it. In the, <laughs> but even though I've I like, never heard of her. Right, exactly. I don't know who that girl is. But um, She's a huge influence on me. <laughs> But it, it does, like, it, it It seems like there are a lot of, like, it just, for being a broke Parma dude, I, I see people doing stuff that I may have done it sometime, it's just like, oh, how the hell are they, like, can I get some sort of run out of the shit I do? But um, I'm also very self-indulgent and full of myself completely, and I take credit for everything, so. Well, we're going to get to that in a little bit. At the end here, we're going to talk about, do you see some credit coming your way? But I still want to touch on some touchy subjects. He's the... got bills to make up before he sees any credit coming Right, exactly. <laughs> um, I had... It's going to be another 33 years before I get any more credit. While the, time it... While the band had taken some time off, you know, these things surface, you know, where people think they can get away with them. And uh, I just heard on the radio the other day, one of the worst songs I ever heard in my life, which isn't, you know, every song on the radio is the worst song. But David May, he's got a song called Facebook Love. Is that just a coincidence of no. my space whore? God deliberately stole it. Listen, I have shaped the, the, the whole platform of social media and entertainment for the last 10 years, and I will continue to. I'm like Steve Jobs. I'm like a distilled Steve Jobs in just a loud mouth, big foreheaded, um, crooked teeth, sideburn jackass body. <laughs> and uh, I really, you know, you're welcome to everybody that has taken my brilliant ideas and taken them to the next level. That's funny you brought up how you look. Uh, something that comes to mind is there's a girl out there with a tattoo of you on her. Yeah. Uh, this is the impact I'm talking about, where people actually went to permanently have you on their body. Yeah, we can't make fun of her. No, I would bear it. Well, we're, we're, no, no, we're not making fun of her. We're not I here to make fun her. of This is a, a, an interview where people want to <laughs> need so, to know these so things. You're so cynical, Aaron. <laughs> but, uh, no, um... I think it's, it's weird. It's like, why the hell would you? Uh, it's kind of weird. Like, it's, I'll be honest. I mean, right now, serious. Like, weird answering yeah. questions seriously. And then, like, because there's like, oh, I can't be an asshole about that. I'll answer it seriously. Like, it's a weird kind of thing. Um, having someone like, oh, yeah, look, this is you on my skin. It's like, dude, I'm, I got to go clean the toilets after we play here. Like, you know, like, are you sure you wanted to do that? Maybe but she it, just liked the clean toilet. Right, right. She was having how yeah. great the bathrooms looked, and how her mozzarella sticks were cooked to perfection. But um, did she send her burger back? Uh, no, she must have liked it because that's how you start shit with me, basically. Um, no, but a really good, fa- a good friend of the band. Uh, she's been coming to see us forever. Uh, she even booked us down in West Virginia. We played a hot topic in West Virginia. Then what's her name? What? Uh, all right, it's Tori. I don't oh, know if we're going to say remember. it over there. Oh. Hey, this is not a show. quiz show. I, I can't. Tori, I know you're listening. Uh, no, I, I I, think it's awesome. I really do. Uh, like I said, I don't like, wow, you really want that ugly? Of all profiles, it's not like Jerry West or, you know, something cool. <laughs> Jerry West, the logo. <laughs> it's my dickhead ass. But uh, it's it's awesome, though. No, that is, yeah. You know? Good for you. All right, Tough Scene Cleveland. We'll be right back with the Nick Wolf Band. Oh, my Shit outside, you wouldn't give me a ride 
Hi, this is TJ Lane, and I get all my ideas from Tough Scene Cleveland.
All right, tough scene, Cleveland. We are back. All right, the question that's on everyone's mind, guys: Why are we reuniting now? <laughs> um, I guess we, uh, because the world needs us, CJ. Um, everything's gotten terrible. Everything's gotten boring, and he needs uh, someone needs to come out and yell at everybody all at once. But no, we're really doing it. Um, again, we just like playing together. Um, I, we're never gonna be like a full time band again. <coughs> Uh, I got other things I'm doing, obviously, hosting this show and the other stuff that I do. Um, you know, Muzzle Cock is uh, rec- recording, or Spray Paint Dave, as he's known in the Nick Wolf band. He's Muzzle Cock now. You know, and we've all got our own things, but we're all good for, we're all, we're friends. And it's fun to go out there with your friends every once in a while and play a show. And, you know, for me, I really can't get laid unless I get on stage. So uh, I need to get laid. So uh, any of you girls that might like me, uh, come to the bar and buy me a drink, and th- there's a chance it could happen. So Did that's... you get laid actually one time on a stage? Uh, I, I don't want to talk about that. You're very in front of the stage. Under the stage? <laughs> yeah. On the right. Well, that's there's why... conflicting stories. Well, that's clearly why you're doing this again, but what about you guys? Money? <laughs> That's Fame? a good question. I wonder why they are doing it again. Uh, I wonder. I'm in it to, yeah, to, to further my juggling career right now. That's interesting. Is there anything you'd like to plug as far as your juggling career goes? A, a show, a circus, or something you're going to be appearing at? No, but I need more tennis balls. So. All right, you heard that. at the show, throw them at me, I'll juggle them. Anybody's got some tennis balls they want to bring out to the show? Uh, that's a... Uh, Good Don't idea. talk to him too much because it's just going to sound like you talking to him. Because <laughs> he's 15 feet away from the microphone. <laughs> you know, a lot of people want to know, why such a high turnover rate with the band? Because uh, I'm an asshole and the other people in the band are assholes and it's really hard for us to deal with anybody else. We don't even, like, when we play together, like, we're friends. We all, But if you walked up on us in the street and like saw us talking to each other, you would think that we hate each other. Uh, it's very tough to be in the band. Bob is a big mouth, just troublemaking oaf. Uh, he's not here right now. Yeah, there's a lot of speculation that Bob might not show up, kind of pull an Axl Rose at the He might leave halfway through. I have to deal yeah. with that every time. <laughs> not a, a lot of people are sure if he'll be making. He's not here now. Him, Axl Rose, and Vince Neil are going to be fighting over the last slice of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Muzzle Cock is just, you know, he's a drinking, fighting, even though he's supposed to be on the wagon, he's still getting in fights at weddings and stuff. Fake fights? Um, <laughs> yeah. No, it ain't fake with him. When he starts talking clearly, you are going to get your ass whipped. But, um, and Aaron's just a mean, miserable prick. And it's just, it's tough, and you gotta find the right people. That's why, uh, you know, playing drums for us this time, we couldn't get Mark, uh, unfortunately, it didn't line up uh, properly with Mark. But, uh, Def Jeff is, you know, obviously the co host of this show, is filling in and playing drums for us. And, uh, and I hate playing <laughs> drums. So. Right. But he, he likes being made fun of and yelled at and, and constant bickering. So that's why he's in our band. But um, you gotta have thick skin. But I mean, I guess you. If, for me, it's been a progression. I'm not a guy that was ever really good at music and had any right to play music. You guys know. I mean, you guys know me before I, when I was carrying gear for you guys. I never really had an affinity or any reason why I should be in a band. It's just having the energy of wanting to do it and finding guys you can do it with at first and gelling as a team and building something and then firing their, getting rid of their lazy, worthless asses as well, soon as you get a chance to get anyone now, that's a little bit better. Now, you just told us the reason you are doing the band was to get laid. <laughs> um, what are some of the former members up to? I mean, are we going to see Dave Ryan doing a, a all-night set of Dave, uh, Nick Wolf classics? Dave Ryan will be eating the face off a naked man soon. Um, now, Dave's heroin, got his... Heroin. Bath salts. He's in jail uh, for bath salts right now. Tranny, bath salts, uh... And, and what about fly-by-night guys like Jimmy? Will he be doing a one-hand band doing Nick Wolf Classics anytime soon? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're still waiting. Uh, Jimmy's still waiting for us to call for, to find out when the next flask run is packed is going to be. Like, no, next week we're going to jam Jimmy. It's going to be great. We're never playing again. He doesn't know it yet. <laughs> That's real nice. Now he's going to break his hand again by punching the wall. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, and there, no, we had a lot of guys. Let's see, the, uh, the original... Like, it's just evolved. I knew, like, I was in a band called Pride of Ohio. You were in it. Um, and Dave, you know, original from Nick Wolf and my our buddy Doter. And uh, I, I decided that I didn't want to strap myself to a name of a band because when it, turnover happened, as I knew, like, I knew turnover was going to happen. That's just the nature of the beast. So I was like, well, it's just going to be the Nick Wolf band. And, you know, whoever I play, whoever's in the band's in the band, but I, it's always going to be me. Unfortunately... We got good at it, like, things rolled up through. I was actually get, able to get musicians that were good. 
So then I got sucked into the same trap because it's like, I'm not going to, I can't, I tried to replace these guys before because I really hate them all, but there's, I can't play with anybody else. And, and yet some so of good. them are the result of replacements themselves. Well, yeah, I mean, definitely being, uh, as soon as Aaron's like, hey, I think I might want to play. We were like Garrett, who was a pain in the ass. And, you know, he's a nice guy, but he had his issues. It was just like, all right, um. Yeah, later, dude. You know, Buzzlecock's sick of driving you everywhere. But, if anyone's going to get rides from everyone, it's going to be me. Um, that brings me to a good point. I want to point out to the audience that this is like a blue-collar working man where you can get in and work your way up to better positions. And Aaron's proof of that, who came in <laughs> as bass player and made his way up to guitar. Um, with, with power like that, was there any uh, thought to maybe change the name to, like, the Aaron Dowell Disorder or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good side project, Rupa, uh, Aaron. CJ will be calling you about that tomorrow. I you guys already do, have I a can't show in my own band. I'm too busy playing in everybody else's. <laughs> I know. Well, no, Aaron is a, you know, Aaron's a guy that is really, if, you know, he does his own thing. He's always in good bands and stuff, but if, he's a guy that if you really need to do something, he can pretty much jump in right away and play it. And he's going <laughs> to fucking be miserable. He's going to be pissed doing it. He's going to do it begrudgingly, but he's going to give you everything. It's going to go awesome. You're not going to have any I'm problems. I'm going to give you half. Right, well, <laughs> half of what you give is still better than not, uh, like, three bobs. <laughs> He's not lot. here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and, and you bobs, brought up a good uh, point I want to talk about. You brought up a good point. You said it will always be you. But there was some time ago where speculation was going around that Aaron and Bob had kind of went on without you with me singing the band, and it was... Funny when people would come see the exceptions and they saw this. I'm they, the one that told everybody I had CJ. It was pretty much the Nick Wolf band without Nick Wolf. Yeah, and there was a big difference there, wasn't there, CJ? Well, yeah, there was. It was about a foot it, without Nick Wolf and without like uh, about 50 people on, on the average. But um, no, dude. Uh, yeah, no, I I was all about that. I was hoping Bob would join your band, so I didn't have to deal with him anymore. But um. You know, we, we're all friends, obviously. We all, you know, and we've talked about this before on the show. Like, we all kind of came up together and shit. And it's just, you know, sometimes you got a buddy in band, but they can't do it right now. But I'm going to keep playing. So it's like, if I find someone else for a little while, that's cool. But if that person wants to come back, there's always there's always room. I could, I'm ridiculous enough to have four or five guitars if they all work, you know. Um, well, you have had four or five guitars. Just well, not I'm talking at the same time. Same time. Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, th th there's been a lot. I mean, and if you go, but we've all been there. I mean, you just, if you want to keep playing, you're not always going to play with the same people. And it's about just kind of moving on until you, until you find that group to where you're like, yeah, I can't do shows without them anymore. It sucks. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. It's just like, I could go on, you know, I could play all the time in a band with uh, other guys. These guys just can't. It's just not, it's never in the cards because we've all decided what this band was going to be that it's just like, we're not going to try to tour or anything like that. But if I were going to go at it, it would be cool. But I, there's no point because I don't want to be in an inferior band than I already was. And it's, um, you know, you come on, you see me, Dave, Aaron, Bob, um, and Def Jeff here, you know, filling in for uh, Mark. Um, I, I think you know you're going to get a good show and it's going to be as good as we possibly can be. And there's just no point to do it any watered down version than that. Jeff, are you in this just to further your own career? <laughs> I mean, this is anger management. That's what drums are to me. Okay. Well, um, let's no. talk about the show coming up. Did I? Okay. When is it? <laughs> what show? Um, no, it's, it will actually be this Friday if we get this edited and put up in time. Don't you have fun. Or, I'll, you, I'll, I'll or we could use it for the next reunion because this information won't amount more. Right. <laughs> he said nothing's going to change. He um, <laughs> said now that's, now that's class with, uh, who the hell are we playing? Full Moon Renegades, uh, Fock. And uh, Eddie Doldrum, all different bands, different kind of music, but it'll be good. Oh, they're not the same well, bands? Clearly, Switchblade Saints and Rocket by Ransom must be broke up if they're Right, they weren't playing. available. No starting cocks. Uh, <laughs> or is the budget not big enough to pay the bands you used to have on the bill with you? Right, exactly. Well, we couldn't get the Giggities or uh, Davey Porter. Well, who can? Like you, CJ. Uh, <laughs> to, to play around. And Sex Tuple X is still a whole now for more money. Their producer is just an asshole. But, um... Parish one, every band, class. this whole thing is, no. every band doesn't go through Parish anymore. He's like the pimp of bands, and he won't, like, do anything that works. Oh, Dave, I need, I'm going to get this band to play the show. Yeah, they're good. And then he calls them a day before, and, get, oh, well, my show's a muscular dystrophy show. <laughs> and he was just stole every single band I put on. He steals my shows, and because it's for a good cause, he gets to win. 
Then, well, listen, that much mouth degenerate is going to spend it all on booze. Just remember, even third world countries have presidents or kings. Right, exactly. Uh, is the scene like rock, paper, scissors where a benefit beats out a reunion? I, never in my book. I, I try not to do anything for anybody ever. Until Tough Scene Cleveland's fundraiser next season, um, then I'll be all about it. But now, from the music standpoint. Well, on closing notes, what's next for the Nick Wolf Band after this? Will we have a live DVD of the show, a greatest hit CD? Uh, can we expect new music at some point? Uh, None of the above. Yeah, it's... A new T-shirt? I would really say, you know, I'm not ruling out doing anything ever again, but if you want to see the band, you better be here this week at Knowledge Class because I can't guarantee you that there's going to be another show. That's how we are. I can't say there's never going to be another show or there is going to be. I, I don't want to... I don't want to let people know. I want people on guard. Um, and when we decide to do it, we come... Like, I like disappearing, and everyone's like, finally, that idiot, shut up. Good. I don't have to hear that asshole for a while. Maybe if he ran out his, he ran his course, finally. And then I just come back again when they're not expecting it, just to annoy them and bring more misery to everything. And that's what we'll always do. Um, we're kind of like the Gestapo in a rush, you know, or the KGB, like, after communism. Like... You thought it was all gone, but there were still pockets, and every once in a while they'd show up at your house and rape your family. <laughs> and that's kind of what the Nick Wolf Band's philosophy is. So you're is saying about. Nick Wolf Band is willing to come to your house and do what it takes? Yes. We will, we will perform sodomy on all, sonic sodomy on all of you. However, we, <laughs> we do have uh, tons of uh, live video that uh, we captured and, and people, people have given us over the years, so... Like, uh, 2013, it, it's going to be a big product release. We're, we're just, you know, who's the MCA, MGM. Yeah, right. Uh, Def Jam. Well, Tisa, Geffen, who, they're all fighting over the uh, rights to the DVD. 20, as no, we you right take now. it. No, you take it. <laughs> it's going to be a Punjab bootleg release. Yeah. <laughs> be on YouTube. Right. Um, under the suggestion, if you click on a, a Tough Scene Cleveland, you might also like. I'm like you, CJ. I like talking about myself a lot. So, like, I'm always going to, you know, I can't just disappear and not be saying my name or have my stuff out there. So, uh, my, my own vanity is going to cause there to be something more. Um, but, yeah, I just don't know what it is. But, like I say, just come to this show because I'm going to act like it's my last show. I might, you know. Do something stupid or burn every bridge I might have Peace. as far as the music industry. Um, we'll see. A lot of a lot of bridges. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. I think uh, June eighth at the uh, Now Let's Class. It's going to be a big show. It's good to have you guys back on the scene. Uh, kind of show some of these bands who's boss. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> but no, and CJ, you know, wonderful like job. Thank you. Yeah. It's not easy sitting in that. The captain's church got a lot of pressure, right? Yeah, look at your fatigue. Yeah. You got yeah. the water. You got to know what you're doing back here. It's pretty brutal, yeah. It'll also leave you a wet mark. It's, yeah. <laughs> I chose to sit on the cushion that didn't have the piss stain. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot. This is Tough Scene Cleveland. This has uh, been a lot of fun, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>
subscribe to Tough Scene Cleveland on YouTube. Like Tough Scene Cleveland on Facebook.